everyone, we are at the Point Furman Park. This is where the Point Furman Lighthouse is. Now, we got here too late in the day because it closes at four, but that doesn't mean we can't see how beautiful the outside is. If you caught our last video, you know that Tori and I are at the California Associations of Museums Conference in Long Beach, California for the week. That means we get to take you exploring with us. First up for part two of this trip is the Point Furman Park, where Jason and Liz immediately started climbing the huge trees. It's truly a great park. Lots of wide open lawns, picnic areas, sea views, and of course, the fantastic trees. Okay, you guys know how much I love trees. Look at the bark on this one. Isn't this incredible? There's even this beautiful well mural near the 150 year old lighthouse. In the shade of another tree that I can almost imagine has been here for the 150 years. You start to wonder which is first, the lighthouse or the tree. Turns out it's a fig tree, just like the giant one we found in Whittington Beach Park on the big island of Hawaii last season. And this one has gorgeous ocean views too. Furman Park has a long beach walk that borders the entire park with the lighthouse right in the middle of that walk. The lighthouse is Victorian in design right down to the white picket fences and is a nice stop as you stroll down the path or take a rest on that vintage looking carved stone wall. Okay, so as Lawrence and Natalie of the Brazen Brits like to say, off the top of my head, the Furman Lighthouse was built in 1874 from Redwood. How more Californian can you get from that? Then the Fresnel lens came via ship around Cape Horn to be delivered here. Now here is probably the most fun fact, and that is this lighthouse was run by women. That's right. Miss Mary L. Smith and her sister were the first lighthouse keepers. How cool is that? So that lens up there, 2100 candle power. I mean, it had to be seen by sea. Fortunately for now, we have the harbor light. That's the third lighthouse I couldn't get pictures of. I'm still gonna try, but so far I haven't been able to get pictures of that is out in the actual Los Angeles Harbor. So this light, as well as the one that we saw, the Lions Lighthouse, are not in use, but they are wonderful historic sites for you to come and see. And just the top of my head, in 1898, a petroleum vapor incandescent lamp was installed. So that original light had to be retired. And the super fun thing about 2024 is they're celebrating their 150th anniversary. And admission is free. All ages are welcome, but if you're under 40 inches, you may not be permitted into the tower. And 18 and under need a parent guardian. We spent a bit more time enjoying the garden views of the lighthouse and the walk along that stone wall before heading just a tiny bit away to our next location. Right now we are at the Korean Friendship Bell. This was donated to the US on its bicentennial and it is made of gold, silver, tin, and copper and phosphorus. It is beautifully ornate. Let's go see it up close. General Jahai, great general of the world. So general of the world is on the on left. The left. General Jahai is on the, on the right. right. The bell was cast in Korea and shipped to the United States. 
four pairs of figures, each pair consisting of the Goddess of Liberty holding a torch and a Korean spirit are engraved in relief on the body of the bell. Each of the Korean spirits holds up a different symbol, a symbolic design of the Korean flag, a branch of the Rose of Sharon, Korea's national flower, a branch of laurel, symbol of victory, and a dove of peace. The bell has no clapper, but is struck from the outside with a wooden log. The pavilion is supported by 12 columns representing the 12 designs of the Oriental Zodiac. So the Friendship Bell is really something to see. I really hope you come out here to San Pedro near the Point Furman Light and check it out. And from the Friendship Bell, I finally see the Harbor Light. Check, third lighthouse. The views from up on the hill above Point Furman Park are amazing. It really is just so beautiful. From there, we made our way to dinner. Now, Pacific Palisades is not near Long Beach. It's about a 40 minute drive, but K Padre in Palisades Village is worth the trip. So we just had to share. It's a small place that packs a punch. We sat at the bar and chatted up the chef while he prepared our tacos. Easily the best we had on our trip and so affordable. The guacamole is the best we've ever had anywhere. It was a great way to end our day. We definitely recommend. Good morning from our last day in Long Beach. We are headed off to someplace special, but I had to stop at the Giant Penny. You guys know I love anything ridiculously big or ridiculously small. You can't get any more ridiculously big than this, I think. A giant penny right in downtown Long Beach. Long Beach has a huge public art collection. I'll pop the link to the art map in the description below. Okay, sometimes weird and wonderful aren't really how it looks, but what it is. What you're looking at right now, those are condos. Villa Riviera is a registered historic building on Ocean Boulevard in Long Beach. From the time of its completion in 1929 until the mid 1950s, it was the second tallest building in Long Beach. It stands out from everywhere. We have seen it from across the bay, driving around town and wondered what the heck it was. It's condos. Is that like the most California thing ever? Just driving around town was fun, but this morning on our way to the next location, we really wanted to see the Wyland Whale Wall at the convention center. I wish we'd had more time to explore the dozens of murals that are in this town. Another reason to return. All right, we're at the Aquarium of the Pacific, a premier aquarium in Long Beach. We've been here before, but it's been many years, so I'm so excited to come back. Let's go inside. It's located on six acres of Rainbow Harbor. Part of it we explored in our last video. So when we started this trip, we went over to the lighthouse. Queen Mary's behind that. And now we're at the aquarium. Uh, All right, you know, as a museum person, I love seeking out the docents, finding out those employees who know a thing or two. And I just did. <laughs> So who are you? I'm Karina, I work here at the aquarium. I'm part of the education team. Um, and I've been here for about two years now. I love it. <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, these are moon jellies. We have lots of moon jellies throughout the aquarium. They're a little bit clumped up at the top right now. <laughs> um, but this is just to show that we have them here. Um, moon jellies are a type of sea jelly. We're trying to stay away from the term jellyfish, but if you say it, Everyone's gonna know what you're talking about, so it's okay. Right. <laughs> um, but these ones here, they do have the ability to sting as all true jellies do. Um, however, their sting is so mild and our skin is so thick, um, so we actually don't feel it. So we have a spot um, here, if you go through the gift store or a little bit further back and then make a left, um, you will be able to touch them um, and not get hurt. You will <sighs> probably get stung, but you just won't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, we can touch you a jelly? You can touch them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. This may be the best day ever. <laughs> and in checking out the lobby, we see they scan for $8 parking validation. How cool. One less thing to worry about when you visit. 
25 years. And if you're translating this video, know that they have the guide translated as well. We're doing the name maker, because even though Parker's not here, we still have to get him something fun. But we're gonna go back to Aquatic. Oh, look at that. Oh, you have choices. I think I kind of like the beach, though. Parker loves the beach. I'm going to do beach. So when I leave, I'll come pick it up. And if you don't want your name, how about you in the ocean? Edie the Blue Well is 88 feet long. She and her baby are the main feature for the center of the aquarium. The first section is Southern California. Since I'm a snorkeler, not a diver, it's always fun to see and learn about all of the different types of fish I may not see normally. See, I knew it, fish just hang out. A grouper. Oh, look who's hiding in the corner. I know, oh, I like it too. Eels. As with most aquariums, there is a lot of information you can gather at each tank. I love both the pretty fish and the not so pretty ones too. Okay, that's funny and creepy all at the same time. And we were about to get a treat and a charming three year old who was as fascinated as we were. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. It's a spiny lobster. I saw some fish too. I'm telling you, the kids at aquariums just make the experience for me. I love hearing their excitement and wonder. And it was so cool to see how this aquarium presented their habitats, including decorating the ceilings in some places and floors in others with effects. All right, so maybe not all fish just hang out. Do you see that? Do you see them all change direction? And they just did it again. I always wonder who makes that call, who makes the decision to just turn. And then my favorite part, the jellies. I could sit and watch them float for hours. If you've ever been to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, you know there are places where you can like walk into the exhibit. Well, almost. When you talk about fun, check this out. There he is! Look at him breathing at the top. Say hello, guys! Of course, we couldn't resist the interactives. Mm. It was fun to explore and check out the artwork, but it was the sea lions that brought out the seven-year-old in me. I don't like tunnels, but I loved this one. Watching the sea lions and seals swim was so much fun. Mm -hmm. 
And these were the ones we were watching from the other side. And as you can see, I think you can see them from above too. And you can watch feeding and training sessions from above. Time to explore outside. <gasps> birds. Is that a real bird? Yeah, I think that's a heron. Oh my goodness. Like a night heron. Yellow crowned night heron. There we go. Everyone, meet Batman. He was rehabilitated after a car accident and brought here to live. He does his bird yoga each morning and is very social. Are you gonna come over? Say hi. <laughs> Look at you. <gasps> there was a lady here one day. Speaking of birds, there was a lorikeet enclosure. Time to feed the birds. Okay. These rainbow colored nectar loving cuties are incredibly social. Even the wild ones often open to eating out of your hand. But be aware, your hand is not the only place they will land or peck. So they are everywhere. So if you have a little one, you might want to think about buying the food and just walk them through instead because they land on you and not just to eat the food, but they like land on your shoulder or your head. They can be very overwhelming. But for a bird person, this is totally cool. Do their um, enrichment structures. Um, they were built by some of our volunteers. Right, so what are we feeding them? We are feeding them nectar, um, and it is a combination of water and then essential vitamins. Um, they are able to, um, so they're nectivores, so they only eat like the stuff that comes out of the fruit. Do you know oh, okay. Sometimes they walk on the floor a lot, and um, it is because they are used to picking out fruit that fall. And, you know, they suck up the nectar in those fruits. In the wild, what would that be? What kind of fruit? Um, any fruit that's like native to South Pacific um, habitats. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so after that, I had to take a sensory break. That's overwhelming. I mean, it's super cool. Don't get me wrong. It is super cool, but it is overwhelming. So we came over to an area that's talking all about water conservation. So we always have to remember that aquariums are educational teaching programs. And there's a lot to learn here. So take your time and go through. It's not a huge place, but it has a lot to teach you. California steelhead. Look how beautiful they are. One of the hands-on features here are the rays. There are several different types swimming in these pools for you to discover. And yes, even touch. You may have guessed that on a weekday, you will find field trips. So arrive early or wait till later in the day for the crowds of kids to be lighter. We love the kids, so we don't mind a bit. The aquarium is very accessible with elevators to take you up to the different levels if you're not able to use the stairs. So several times a day, they have presentations here where you can see the sea lions better. We were not there feeding time, but it was fun to watch them splash around. And then we discovered the penguins. Not only was it fun watching them swim around, but we got to know their names thanks to the beads on their shoulders. It truly is amazing how you can turn into a little kid watching them swim around. And even crawl under to watch from below. Okay. Tori crawled under to watch and film from below, just so you can see how much fun it was. <laughs> That's cute. Oh, Mr. Pig. We spent so much time just hoping the penguins would swim near us. Big smiles on our faces. At 
the Shark Tank, we found lots of different touching opportunities, including another type of ray. Here, there's stir called sturgeons. There's a really big one right in the middle and the smaller ones over here in the corner. Back inside, but now on the top floor, we discovered the Sia Cortez Exhibition Hall. Look at the size of that puffer fish. He's a spiny porcupine fish. And he's 20 inches long. Wow. We've seen these snorkeling and they have never been that big. Five, 10 inches normally. Like this yellow black spotted puffer fish. If you're having fun with us at the aquarium, please bop that thumbs up and then subscribe to come with us on our next adventure. This was the part of the aquarium I'd been looking forward to. More jellies and sea otters too. What is your favorite the aquarium? Tell us below in the comments. Due to one of the classrooms at the Tide Pool exhibit, we didn't get close, but it was fun listening to the kids marvel at the animals there. I both love and are creeped out by crabs. They fascinate me. Unfortunately, the sea otters were not there when we visited, just the giant fish. But some of the exhibits were under renovation, so maybe next time. We did get a fun sea otter interactive though. Off to see their wonderful gift shop and out to see the moon jellies. Oh, so these are from right here? Yes. You didn't and ask you me. could literally touch them? You didn't ask me if they stink. Do they? Yeah. Well, we met a docent at the front and she said that our skin is too thick. They're so we, they sting, but we don't feel it. That's exactly right. Right here? Only the top. Oh, what does that feel like? It's squishy. Nothing. Soft one. Let's do it together. It's like, like jelly. Kind of. Really soft rubber. Now the round circles are their stomachs. Remember, the, the and normally, I don't think they fed them yet today. They make a smoothie out of brine shrimp, which is an orangey color, and they pour it in. And then they work it out of way. They work it away into the center, which is so usually you see little orange circles, and that would be their stomach. But like this one, yeah. So what is that again? A smoothie out of what? A brine shrimp. Brine shrimp. So in the ocean, they gather plankton. These little coral arms and things that are hanging on the side, they pull in the food. It's like jello. So the ones that are orange, they've eaten. And the ones that are not orange are still hungry. We're sorry, guys. I don't know how often they feed them. It's hard to know when they're hungry. Seriously, the highlight of our trip. The fountain mural is called Rios de la Vida and represents the journey of the local waters to the sea. All right, so that was a lot of fun. I think touching the jellyfish is probably one of the coolest things I've ever done. They feel like soft rubber. It is, it is so cool to do this. The aquarium takes about two hours. I mean, we literally did everything and messed around for filming and we're still done in two hours. So it's not an all day activity, but you saw where we're located. That great park we showed you earlier is here with the lighthouse. There's lots of shopping and food behind. So lots to do in Long Beach. Thanks for joining us today. Safe travels, take care. We'll see you next time.